Hello, Calculus Kids. This is Mr. Bean. Today's lesson, we're going to do the quotient rule, which is has some similarities to the product rule. And as you're going to see, if you have did the product rule correctly, this one actually will be very similar. Won't be too much more difficult, but it is a little bit more to memorize. So the first off, let's just remember, this is the same thing we did last time, but that now it's a quotient. So we have division of two different functions or two things that have variables in them. In this case, the variable would be an x. So the way you take the derivative of this, and you just have to memorize this, is the following. You have the derivative of the first, so I consider the numerator the first thing and the denominator the second thing. The derivative of the first times the second one left alone, just like the product rule. But now it's different, we have subtraction. In the product rule, we always did addition. And then we have the first one gets left alone and the derivative of the second. Okay, so there's the quotient rule, except that instead of just plus and minus difference, now in the quotient rule, you also have to divide by g squared. Whatever g is, you square it. So don't take the derivative of the bottom. Notice it's not a g prime right there on bottom. It's not g prime squared. It's just g squared. Okay, so get that written down and let's practice with it. So the first one you'll notice here we have, if we're going to take the derivative, dy dx will equal, uh, let's make a, hopefully I can do a straight line. Okay, make a kind of a big long fraction. So the derivative of the top, the derivative of the first is just a 4x. Now we leave the second one alone, 3x plus 1, minus. And now you leave the first one alone, so it's just 2x squared, times, and now you take the derivative of the second, which is 3. And all of this over the denominator, 3x plus 1, squared. Whoops, forgot the plus 1. Okay, let's simplify this a little bit. dy dx is going to equal, uh, we can distribute here, distribute to distribute, we'll get a 12x squared plus 4x minus 6x squared all over. Now do not multiply the denominator out. I would recommend you just leave this as a nice simple quantity squared, just like that. And then we can say that this equals, uh, simplify this, and you have 6x squared plus 4x all over 3x plus 1 quantity squared, and that's the answer. There's nothing else that's going to simplify here, so we're good. That is the derivative of 2x squared over 3x plus 1. Okay, let's do some more. So g prime is going to equal, we are going to have the derivative of the first, is just itself exponential e to the x is just 3 e to the x and now we take the second one and we leave it alone we just write it in there nothing going on now subtraction because of quotient rule and then we leave the first one alone which happens to be the same thing as the derivative and then you take the derivative of the second which is 2 all over the denominator squared 2x quantity squared Okay, let's see if we can clean this up a little. And then we'll get g prime of x equals, uh, this simplifies to 6xe to the x minus, and then this becomes 6e to the x all over 4x squared. Now this is the answer. Uh, we can box this and say that that's the answer, but I do want to point out Sometimes you might have to factor things and try and simplify even more, or maybe you're trying to set it equal to zero and solve. So I want to point out that another way of writing this could be that you take out a 6e to the x because the numerator has that in common, and then this would just be x minus 1 all over 4x squared. So that's a good thing to get used to doing just because we will have times where we need to set this thing equal to zero and solve for it. Either one of these answers, though, would, would work. Either one would be correct. All right, number three. So we have h prime of x equals, you know what? Pause the video, do this one on your own. Let's just have you do one of these on your own, and then we can uh, check and see how you're doing. So pause the video now. Okay, this is what I have for my answer. And you notice here I wrote h prime of x equals because I was thinking, okay, how am I going to simplify this? But then I started looking at this and what is there to simplify? I don't think there is anything here that would really simplify down anymore. 
And so students always ask me, how do I know when to simplify? And again, I'll repeat this. It all depends on the problem. If it's a multiple choice problem, you just have to manipulate this until you get the answer of one of the multiple choices. And so, the, you know, maybe they'd separate the two terms and cancel out this 2x squared minus 5. Maybe not. Uh, but this is the derivative, so that's okay for this one. Okay, number four, this one's an important example because uh, I wanted to show you that sometimes quotient rule is not necessary. You could use quotient rule on this and everything would be just fine. But I also want to show you that if you simplify first, and you'll see in my solution for, uh, for this packet, I put, for this lesson, I put simplify first to remind you, okay, don't look at the solutions uh, until after you've tried them, but I reminded that some of these you would want to simplify. And here's how you can do that. You're allowed to take the denominator and split the numerator up into all its terms. Now that's again, only the numerator can split up into the different terms and then just put the 2x squared on bottom of each of these. So then if it becomes h of x equals, this then simplifies to uh, 3 halves, and this is now 1 over x, or in other words, x to the negative 1, plus 1 half x to the negative 2. And now I can just use the power rule combined with the constant multiple rule with the constants in front. So then h prime of x would equal negative 3 halves x to the negative 2 minus the 2 comes down and cancels with the 1 half. So I have x to the negative 3. And then I could even now simplify the derivative. So I would have negative 3 over 2x squared minus 1 over x cubed. And there is your derivative for number four. And that actually saves a lot of time than trying to do the quotient rule. So if you see a single term in the denominator like that, just one single term, try to separate all the terms of the numerator with that denominator and then simplify from there before you take the derivative. Okay, for the last two, first I numbered these wrong. That should be number five. That should be number six. Sorry about that. Your packet should be should work correctly. Uh, now, this is just like what we did in our last lesson, but you're just using the quotient rule since these are little fractions here. So I'm going to write this right here. H prime equals uh, F prime. I'm not going to worry about the of X part because I'm just trying to note real quick what the derivative is. So F prime, and then the second one we'll leave alone. So that's going to be 3G minus, and now you leave the F alone f of x is the loan, and then 3g prime. So 3g prime all over 3g quantity squared. Now let's go down here and start working out what in the world would be h prime of 2. Okay, so f prime is negative 2. So I get a negative 2 times my 3 times my g. What's g? g is negative 1 minus f is 4. Uh, oh, be careful here. I should have pointed this out earlier. A common mistake, don't forget to distribute the negative when it's necessary. Sometimes that's necessary. On the next example, you'll see it. Uh, okay, that looks confusing. So minus 4, then I have the 3, and then I have the g prime. What's g prime? A 2 times 2. Okay, now that's all over. 3 squared is 9, and then g is a negative 1. So negative 1 squared. Okay, h prime of 2 equals, and then uh, I'm just going to clean this up a bit real fast. Okay, I simplified that down to 6 minus 24 for the numerator, and then that is a negative 18 over 9, so that equals negative 2. Okay, so the last one, I'm going to have you pause again. The only thing that I will mention here to set you up is this negative thing. When you have a negative in front, It'll be r prime is going to equal. So you're going to have this long quotient rule thing that you're doing. And that negative just carries along with it. Just put the negative right there in front. And then apply the quotient rule. And let's see what you come up with. So, and then plug in all your numbers. And I will have the answer appear here in just a minute. OK, and there you see my answer of 4 ninths. And I left my work up there so you can see how I did it. Hopefully you got that one right. So the only difference now is just remembering the rule for the quotient where you have subtraction in the numerator and then the second thing is squared in the denominator compared to the product rule. Okay, good luck on this packet and rock that master check and then we'll have one more lesson before we wrap up this unit.